Hello, I'm Ragnarok, and welcome to The Reckoning. So today we are doing the Age of Calamitous mod for Conan Exiles Earth Magic Rework. So, uh, we t it took us a while, but we got the new Earth Mat- we got the Earth Mat- or the magic videos completed a while back ago. Uh, it was pretty in-depth, we did a lot of stuff on it, um, and then the magic was reworked again. Yay. So, uh, the good thing is, is I've kept those videos up in the meantime. The main reason is because how you acquire the magic has changed. Um, I, I just recently uh, released the video, Nature Attunement and Ascension, um, going over some of the first steps to acquire magic. But those videos are still relevant because the, the mats required to do stuff, or at least the majority of them, uh, the spells are the same, the attacks are the same, the buffs and debuffs. Um, and all that kind of stuff about the actual core magic itself is the same. So majority of the video is still relevant. The only thing that's not relevant is how to actually acquire the magic, which, you know, might be actually one of the most important parts. But I left those videos up. I did put a note in the comments um, in the description stuff, letting people know that I'm working on new updated. So here we are. This is the rework for the earth magic. The, in my opinion, the first magic that you're probably going to get prior, it was the fire magic. Now it's the earth magic. Um, so we're going to go through some of the stuff. Now, the, we are releasing these the magic in a different way than we did before because magic is different than the way it was before. So the first video was Nature Ascension and, or Nature Attunement and Ascension um, guide. That was the magic uh, guide part one. Make sure you watch that one prior to this one because we're going to skip over the steps that was in that video that you will need to accomplish to learn Earth Magic and to level up Earth Magic. So in this video, we're going to go over the actual earth magic itself, where to find the hidden spells, the spells themselves, and all that fun stuff. So, um, and I'll make note of what parts you might want to reference the nature attunement and ascension video for when we get to each of those parts. But let's get into it. Okay, so the first things you need to do is definitely go reference the nature attunement and ascension video, uh, magic guide part one. You're going to have to get the ancient arts feet um and you'll also have to learn the nature attunement both those steps are in that guide um so go watch that i mean you can kind of tell your nature attunements right here next to your earth magus so this is one of the rare the rarities where you're actually going to see them next to each other um but definitely go check that out so you can make sure you hit up the steps or a handful of them but basically once you get the nature attunement you can move to where we are right now um but you also need your the other requirements prior to nature attunement. Uh, so this is your Earth Magus. I'll show you on the map where we are. We're in the upper right of J7, uh, right across from Zalthos Refuge. We're also right across from the Van Gogh Camp, Nakata's Keep, or whatever. I forget the actual name of it. Um, either way, it's one of the Van Gogh boss camps. We actually have a video on all the AOC faction camps because they all change. So definitely check that out if you're wondering where they all are. Either way, come to your Magus of the Earth Element. You're going to come here. And you're going to get a Tome of the Earth Element. Make sure you get you have 50 Vulcan Bees on you. You get Vulcan Bees basically from just handpicking or using a sickle scythe, whatever, on uh, fiber trees. Uh, most bushes, actually, I think, but fiber trees specifically. Get your Tome of the Earth Element. The cool thing is, is you only need to get this once. You get it. You put it in the station. You use it. You use it to craft the Earth Station. You use it to craft some of the spells. And it never gets used up. It's always there. So just get one of them. Keep it. Don't lose it. Don't throw it away after you craft your station. And you'll be good to go for Earth Magic for at least most of the stuff. Okay, next we need to learn Earth Magic. So we're right over here, again, in the middle top of J7. We were just over here, um, over by where th to get the uh, Tome. You can actually kind of see it. It's right over there. But you can come down here. You're going to run in here. You can fight these guys. You can run past them. It really doesn't matter. The boss for this cave, this is a vanilla cave, is right up there. We're going to run on the left side. There's usually some crocs down here. Um, again, you can ignore them. You can fight them, whatever. But we are going for this right here. Now, as long as you have the requirements, the prerequisites for it, you will learn Earth Magic. Okay, so you ask, well, what if I touch the shrine without the nature attunement or without learning ancient arts or any of that fun stuff? Well, let me show you. So right now, as you can see, it's a different animation. Pretty cool animation, actually. And it exploded, and now I have overload. If you look on the left side, 100 points of damage every second for 35 seconds. Essentially, you're going to die. It doesn't matter how much vitality you have. It doesn't matter how much armor you have. You're dead. 
So here's a hint. Don't touch it unless you have nature attunement and all the other prerequisites. You'll be good to go. Okay, so next thing is we're going to go to our feats menu. We're going to our weapons menu. And here's your magics right here. As you get them, as you level them up, as you get new spells, they'll all show in your weapons menu. Once I get fire magic and so, 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 you'll get all the other stuff. Either way, when you want to craft it, you're going to come here to your handcrafting menu. And right there is the earth altar. So as you can see, it needs a tome of the earth element. You don't need that tome to learn earth magic, but I usually get it first just because it's right next to the nature attunement. So there's no reason to not get them both right there. Otherwise, you're just backtracking for no reason. Um, but you do need it in order in order to actually craft the station. Once you craft it, just throw it into it. Don't touch it. Don't remove it. Just leave it in there. Um, now, the cool thing is, is there is a thrall that goes in the Earth Station. They are the Keepers. You will only find Keepers at Elvenor Camps, Felgarth Camps, and Cold Embrace Camps. Uh, if you're looking for those specific camps, check out our Faction Camp video. We just updated again for the, AO the new AOC rework. So... It will show all the new locations of these people. Now, they obviously spawn randomly, uh, so you'll have to probably clear the camps a couple times unless you're super lucky, which if you're lucky, I'm jealous because I'm never lucky like that. Um, so e the Earth Altar, take every altar takes a unique fuel. Uh, the Earth Altar takes emeralds. So uh, the rates on this server are vanilla rates. They're one time, so this is what you're going to get for 10 times of whatever one I'm using. Um, and I wonder if this hasn't changed, but we'll just go over it again for sake of uh, trying to get it to be complete. So 10 uncut emeralds, 3 minutes, 20 seconds. 21, 21 minutes, 40 seconds for 10 shards. And 1 hour, 23 minutes for 10 full. Also, the other thing you want to make note of is you want to make note of is you see a weapon now that wasn't... We didn't have those before. You'll see a weapon. It's not actually a weapon. It's a harvest tool. Um, each of the temples will have a, its own or whatever altars, temples, whatever you want to call them. Um, you want to make sure you craft these. Not too bad to make it. I mean, the full emeralds kind of a pain in the butt, but it's really not. They're It's just time consuming. Carbon's easy. You get carbon from all coal, coal nodes. And mystical dust, not too bad. I mean, it's not the easiest thing to get, but it's not hard to get either. So, uh, And you'll make that in your alchemy desk. Either way, you're going to want to make this. Okay, so the reason you want to make that tool, and every uh, magic has a unique one, is is because you now have to get an item. Uh, you have to actually harvest a specific item to craft certain magics and to level up your magic. Uh, magics before, you could just level it up when you hit the appropriate level. Now you actually have to get a book from a specific place, which I actually already have all the books right here. Nature, uh, Tom of Nature Ascension 1, 2, 3, and 4. Um, definitely check out the Nature Ascent Attunement and Ascension video for the locations of these books. You'll need these books to level up Earth Magic as well as some of the other Nature Magics. So um, you'll make sure you get these. I showed the location of that video. Check that out. Either way, though, you craft your tool. You go up to Lotus Flowers. And as you can see, I'm not just getting Lotus. I'm actually getting Earth Power Gems. I'm only getting one per node. Unfortunately, there's no way to change that. You can kind of think of the Power Gems as uh, like a religious item. Um, the same as um, if you use like the Mitra Ankh on a down thrall. You're only going to get one of those. I forget what it is. The souls or whatever that are used to craft things in the Mitra Temple. Um, same premise or the same idea behind it now if you're confused if you if i haven't made a video on it and you can't find any information on it if you click on let's just say this is the air magic one you click on it you hit info it actually tells you what you harvest from so this tool is used to harvest earth gems can be used on unique lotus flowers not yellow lotus so this will not look work on the yellow lotus i've had some com some people ask is that a glitch nope it's intended yellow lotus are very very prominent they're everywhere so kind of made it a little too easy um that may change you never know it may be found that you know it's just better to give people more or the amounts that are required you know are so great but either way this is what the power gems look like um there's one for each class of magic you'll need earth ones for the earth magics okay so we're back here at the earth shrine so basically we have earth level uh, earth magic level one we want Earth Magic level two. So what you need to do to come here is you need to come here with the Tomb of Nature Ascent, a Tome of Nature Ascension Volume One, and ten Earth Power Gems. If you click on this, it will send you to the next tier. If we go into our feats menu now, we all now have level two. 
So as you can see, Earth Magic level two. You also need to be level 25 to get this, so make sure you're the appropriate level with those gems. So when we want to level up to the next level, we need to come here with the Tome of Nature Ascension Volume 2, and we need 150 Earth Power Gems. Go into our feats, weapons, there it is, level 3, and you have to be level 40 in order to get that. So level 40, 150 Earth Power Gems, and the Tome Volume 2. Next level, 500 Earth Power Gems, and the Tome Volume 3. So Tome Volley 3, I had 500 Earth Power Gems, and your level requirement is level 80. And the last level is going to be, you need the Ascension Volume 4 and 1,000 Earth Power Gems. So as you can see, you're going to need a lot of Earth Power Gems. You're going to need to use this tool to harvest a lot of Lotus Flowers, which is fine because a lot of the Lotus Flowers are being used in a lot of ingredients lately. Um, so you're going to be harvesting them anyways. I mean, you're not going to get a good return with this sickle versus, say, like a Krenixium sickle or whatever. But either way, you're going to need these gems, so not too bad. But let's get that final level. And you're also gifted an award when you get the final level, which is really nice. Um, let's look at the level requirement first for this. So it's going to be level 120, so you're not going to get max Earth Magic unless you are max level. Um, and... It's nice because it gives you a legendary harvest loot chest. So these are just chests that you get from Boston and stuff like that. They're random RNG what's in them. So they have some really good stuff. I'll use this one. We happen to get Crescent Water and some Uncut Amethyst. You can get some really good stuff. You can get some really crappy stuff. That is what it is. But it's nice because you get a little something for completing the Earth Magic. Now, something just to make note of is if you noticed, I wasn't losing the tomes as I was actually leveling up. The reason is, is uh, these can be shared amongst your clan members. So one clan mate can get this and then keep it and give it to their clan mates. The other thing, too, is that the nature ascension volumes are actually used for not just earth magic. They're actually used for multiple magic. So even if you're not going to uh, give them to clan members, if you plan on getting the other magics, don't throw this away because you're going to end up having to get them again. Um, the I went over it in the nature video, but I was mentioning it here. The nature ascensions are actually used to level up not only earth magic, but air and fire magic. So make sure you do not get rid of these. You hold on to these because you're going to want to use them again as you level up those magics. Okay, so let's go into the magics. Now, we've leveled up our magic all the way. Uh, we've learned all the magics that you can learn uh, through Rejuvenate. I believe you learn at... Let's go into there real quick. Uh, let's see. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Rejuvenate, you learn at level 30. So make sure you grab that one. That's a really good spell for the Earth Magic. And we have a couple of magics that you probably will not see off the bat. The reason is is because I'm with the Felgarth. Um, Felgarth has had a rework. They have sub-factions. One of the sub-factions actually has a bunch of Earth Magic spells. So we are going to go over that when we get that far. But the only two spells you're probably going to see is going to be Soothe One and Rejuvenate. Those are the only two spells you get um, without finding extra spells in the world for Earth Magic. So just keep that in mind. Um, also, and then you'll have all these Earth Magics 1 through 5, and then one that doesn't have a number added at all. So, and we'll talk about that. So first thing is Earth Magic. The way it works is you have these Earth ma these Magics right down here. You have 1 through 5. Most of the Magics have 1 through 5, and then Earth Magic also has one that doesn't have a number. I'll explain that one when we get to it. Essentially, you can think of these as like bows. They're not bows. The damage isn't calculated like bows, but we'll think of them like bows. Okay? Uh, so this is your weapon. And then your spells that you craft, you craft numbers of them. So you only craft your weapon once, right? That's all you got to do. You craft a bow once, whatever, done. You have these are Your spells are your arrows. So you have to craft a bunch of these. Every time you use this spell, you use an arrow. So you lose it. You don't get it back. So you have to craft a bunch of these. Though You'll have to continue to craft a bunch of these. So when you want to use a specific arrow in a bow, you drag your arrow to the bow. And you can kind of see it. You might not be able to see it. I don't know. But you can kind of see a little symbol. Let's see if I can get one of the other ones in there that maybe it's a little more. There you go. You can kind of see that white circle. I dragged this one in. Now it's a yellow circle. Now it's a green circle. Um, so you can just drag your ammo in. So you have your Earth Magic Zero. I'll, I'll call it Earth Magic, Magic Zero. One, two, three, four, and five. Uh, essentially, when you make one through five, as you make the higher one, it requires the previous one. So you're not going to have all five of these. You're not going to need to have all five of these. These are just upgraded versions of the uh, previous one. So it just does more damage, more armor penetration. So in the end, when you're max level, you're only going to have Earth Magic 5. You're only going to care about that one. Um, Earth Magic 0 is its own thing. And like I said, we'll explain that in a second. Um, but you probably, if you're Earth Magic, you're going to have at least one of these 
Well, you have one of these, and you'll probably have enough magic five also. So you'll go both ways on that one. Now you ask, how do I calculate damage with magic? Never mind earth magic, but just magic in general. So the way it works is, is you have earth magic one, through three, five, whatever. All these ones. We've already said it. You take... We'll, we'll start with earth magic one. You take your damage and your armor penetration of the weapon... And you pick your spell. Let's pick um, let's pick Earth Boulder, and we take the damage and penetration of that. So, thirteen and eighteen plus, and you just add them together. Plus fourteen and zero. So if I drag Earth Boulder on Earth Magic one, I am essentially doing. Of course, I have to remember with forty four damage and eighteen percent armor penetration. I just add them together. That's it. Now, if you drag it obviously into Earth Magic five, the Earth Boulder does the same damage. But the magic itself, you're adding this to it. Okay, so the first spell, we're going to go over Soothe. This is going to be the very first spell you get with the Earth Magic Soothe 1. Um, and we're going to drag it onto Earth Magic 0, and we're going to drag it onto Earth Magic 1. So this is the spell that the Earth Magic 0 is created for. It's why this, um, it's a healing spell. Now the reason is, is it's a healing spell. Um, now the unique thing about it is it is target only, so you can only afford heal a target you can't heal yourself you can't like shoot the ground and then stand on it with some of the other magics and get the buff from it um now the trick to this one i get a lot of, i get people sometimes saying hey i'm using soothe on my thrall to heal it and it's not healing well let me see and i missed there we go now we're getting 50 points of healing every three seconds i believe if i remember right that is it lasts for 10 seconds yep it lasts for 10 seconds so um it's a little different than it used to be um, but the reason is, is you probably can't see it. But when you do the spell for Soothe to work, you have to do damage. So that is the reason we have Earth Zero with one damage. You have to do one damage. So this is essentially only going to work on pets and then um, followers, thralls. Uh, but the problem is, is or not problem with, uh, but the difference is, is it's not, it's only going to work if you can damage your thrall. Now, if you're in a PvP server, or if you're on a PvE server that has friendly fire for clanmates, you can heal your clanmates. Um, I mean, essentially, you could heal an enemy if, like, an enemy NPC, if you hit them with it. But you have to do damage in order for this to work. So, again, if there's no friendly fire, if there's no PvP damage, whatever, you cannot heal the target Soothe. Soothe is useless to you. Um, okay, so the next spell is going to be Rejuvenation. Now, Rejuvenation, you get... Naturally, when you learn Earth Magic 1, the Rejuvenation is a spell you can put a feat point into once you hit level 30. So you don't have to hunt for this. There's no special requirement. You just have to learn Earth Magic and then hit level 30. You can learn this one. I like this one a little better because, A, this one works. Uh, you don't have to damage your opponent. Um, it's AoE, and it can self-cast. So you can cast it on yourself as well as your follower. All right, so the way that works is, is as you can see, I have no life. I'm going to hit the ground. I'm going to stand over it. And as you can see, my number is shooting up a lot faster than it was shooting up before. It says small healing effect. Now, rejuvenation is based off of your vitality. So at rough, these are rough numbers, but at zero vitality points, uh, points into your uh, vitality attribute, you'll do about six HP a second for 15 seconds. The spell itself lasts for about 15 seconds. Um, at a, roughly about 20 or 30 vitality, which is the um, one where you get the perk, you'll do about 20 per second, and at 50 vitality, you do about 60 per second. So these are rough numbers. These may change over time, but if you have full vitality, which a lot of people do run full vitality, I myself run full vitality. Um, it's just one of the defensive play, way, ways I play. I mean, 50, 60 HP per second for 15 seconds, that's a good amount of HP. Okay, so we went over Soothe 1. We went over Rejuvenation. Um, those are the spells you get by default when you uh, get Earth Magic. Those are the only spells you'll get by default. Now, any other spells are going to be considered either class-specific spells or faction-specific, or they're going to be uh, hidden spells throughout the world that you have to hunt down and learn, and then you can craft them. Uh, and as long as you're a magic profession, you can learn them. So the first one we're going to go over is Soothe 2. Now, this is the same as Soothe 1, just with a 2 instead of a 1. So it's a little better, um, but the location is... So we are right here in the Unnamed City, pretty much right at Ashira's Rise, which is the Elven Covenant uh, legendary camp with uh, the Ashira boss. Uh, the best way to figure out where I am is if you are familiar with the Warfront. Well, if you're not familiar with the Warfront, get familiar with it because you're going to have to. But uh, there's the Stormhold camp right there with the horse statue. There's that little area where there's the uh, three elves. You start coming up here. 
And right over here is one of those honor vendors uh, with the big tower. And basically what you're doing is you're looking for this big tree. You pretty much can see it once you get into the um, war front in the unnamed city. But you're going to go to the tree, follow the path, and right here, take a sharp right, and you see a stone right here. In the dark, it's going to be a little harder to see, but there it is. As soon as you click on it, you get Life Surge, which is Sooth 2. Okay, so now we're going to check out Sooth 2. And I just realized I probably didn't show the mats. Um, so I'll just click on the stuff in the inventory. Just so you can take a look. So here's Sooth 1. Here is uh, Rejuvenation. And here is Sooth 2. So Sooth 2 takes a little bit more. Whatever. Uh, so we're going to drag Sooth 2 into the Earth Magic Zero slot. Again, it doesn't matter, but you obviously don't want to do damage while trying to heal. And now we'll try to actually hit the target. There we go. And as you can see, Soothe 2, is just, it's just double what Soothe 1 is. So 100 points of healing every 3 seconds um, for 15 seconds. Okay, so the next hidden spell is going to be Earth Boulder. So Earth Boulder is... Right here, we're in the top left of K7. I'll zoom in a little bit more just so we can see exactly where we are. Um, right here is the Eye That Never Closes. Over here is the Zalthor's Refuge, where the Earth Shrine is. So as you can see, it's all pretty much in the same general area. Um, we're looking right there. There's the Eye That Never Closes. This is that little staircase that goes down. You can It just keeps going down into the jungle. Basically, once you get past the little statues, just climb up right, right here. Or you can come around to this tree and climb up right. Either way, it's right here. Just to the hidden, if you're facing the stairway to the left of it, up on a ridge, click on it, and call the Earth, which is Earth Boulder. Okay, now that we have Earth Boulder, let's take a quick look. Right here. Not too bad. Like I said, the mats change all the time, so we're not going to focus on the mats it takes to craft it. You can look it up once you, you know, get the spell and you go into your station. Um, the amount of crafts shouldn't change, so I have that on the screen, at least. We're going to test it out in slot... Earth Magic 1 and Earth Magic 5. Granted, you're not going to have both of these, but just to show you what it looked like beginning game front to end game. Um, and then also we have no points in accuracy. We are getting a plus two bo uh, bonus from the armor I'm wearing, but whatever. We can just, uh, each time we're not, it'd be the same. There really shouldn't be two points in accuracy. Really shouldn't make too big of a difference. So your number should be pretty close. Uh, all the damage rates and all that stuff are vanilla settings, as with all the other stuff that we're testing. Uh, so these are all vanilla rates. Obviously, your server might be more or less, depending on how it has, you know, damage attack thralls, uh, armor on thralls, um, you know, player damage and stuff like that. So just uh, make note of that. If you have any mods that modify how certain attributes like accuracy works, that could change stuff and things like that. So just be aware of that. Uh, the next thing, the thing I do want to talk about before we go into the attacking and actually seeing the spell in effect is with attack magics, and I have tested it with the healing magics, and I really haven't seen a difference that I can that's noticeable. It may be the case, but I doubt it. But with attack magics, there is actually combos. You can do combos with the, the healing spells, as you can see here. But it doesn't really change what it does. But as you can see, um, your light attack is a three combo attack. Now, the difference between them with an attack spell, like Earth Boulder, is that the first combo does one times damage. So whatever the base damage is, it just does the base damage. The second combo, which is the spin, does 1.15 times damage. And the last one, which is the like big thrust does 1.3 times damage. So you do get a damage increase the longer, the farther into a combo you get. Um, the other thing too is though, the farther you get into the combo, the more stamina it drains. So you are gonna lose a little bit more stamina on the third spell than you would the, or the third attack in the combo than you would on the first attack. So there's kind of reason to get combo chains going. Um, the cool thing is if you do the combo, it doesn't matter, you don't have to hit the same person. But if you hit, like, if I hit the first two on this person, this person walks and takes the third one, they're still going to get that times three multiplier. It's on the, it's just how much damage your spell outputs. It doesn't have to happen in the same thrall. Either way, let's take a look at Earth Boulder. Now, Earth Boulder is kind of cool. I'm going to just use the lock on so I have a better chance of hitting them. As you can see, it does a little cripple. And let's see, let's try a different one. I can hit them. Nope. There we go. And there's the third spell. So a little bit more damage, as you can see. Let's do it with the highest. That'll probably miss. Yep, that's a miss. 
when they're walking side to side, the boulder, the lock on doesn't really work. But as you can see, there's a difference about 78 there, 78 again. So there is a good amount of damage done at from the first to second. Now, let us uh, try it real quick with max accuracy. Okay, so I have my accuracy set to max. We got 50 points in the accuracy, and we'll try it with Earth Boulder 5, because you're probably not going to have 50 points in accuracy unless you actually have, unless you're pretty much max level. So we're just going to do the first attack. Let's see if I can hit this guy. Oh, no. All right, so maybe we should lock on, because I'm a horrible aim. Okay, well, apparently locking on, I'm a horrible aim too. Okay, now we're just going to manual aim. Oh, he stopped. That's cheating. There you go. So we went up to 177. It does take a little... I actually do use a couple of spells um, in my game. Um, I will say that once you get used to like how each spell travels, because they all kind of travel at a different velocity, at least it feels that way. It may not be that way. Um, but it feels like they travel different, so you can kind of judge it. It's the same with using like a bow and arrow in the game. Like After you use a bow and arrow for a little while, you kind of get used to the... Um, like how much you have to like lead your target and stuff like that when they're moving a certain way. So as you can see, I'm hitting more of them now. But it, I would say max accuracy does do a considerable amount of damage. Now, this is not a spell you're going to sit here and do stuff. Uh, you know, you're not going to take on four of these guys and by yourself and use these spells unless you're like up on a ledge and stuff like that. But uh, it is a pretty big increase once you put a lot of points into accuracy and have the max spell. Okay, so the next one we are going to go over is the first of the hidden spells that is Faction Locked. So this is Cleanse. Um, let's see where we are on the map. So we're right here uh, on the little river or valley, whatever, that is right below the passageway. Uh, pretty, familiar, I'm sure most people are familiar with it if they in the jungle and especially with all the stuff that is now in the passageway for AOC. Um, either way, it's right up that way. So you just come down. Look on the west side or your right if you're running south down the passageway. And when you get to this big gnarled tree. And then you got this big root and thing with all the spider webs. Just come here to right. And it's a lot more obvious than a lot of the other hidden ones. Um, and here you go. Here's a big tablet. Now this one is faction locked to the Felgarth faction. So you cannot get this unless you are Felgarth. Um, it used to be you had to be a certain level in Felgarth. Um, I tested a bunch of ways. That's not the case anymore. That may change if that was uh, maybe just something that's not working properly. Um, my guess is it's probably just locked to the faction, especially now that uh, Felgarth has sub-factions with their own special spells. Uh, the only restriction to this is you have to be level 60. So, and Felgarth. Click on it, and we learn Cleanse. Okay, so now that we have Cleanse, let's take a quick look at it. Uh, is this one right here again? Won't focus too much on this one. But cleanse. There we go. Uh, again, this it doesn't really matter what you put it in. So you could technically put it in your uh, healing one. Um, it it doesn't really matter. It's an AOE. It's, you self-cast. Uh, so put it wherever you want. Now, the way it works is it's basically cleanse is will cur clear you of curses and poisons. So let's check. Let's test it with uh, curses first. Let's see. All right, so as you can see, we are definitely cursed. Now let's go up here. I'm going to run away. And what I should have did is I should have brought my stat with you. There it is. Okay, so the next one we're going to test it on real quick is we're going to test it on the poison. Let's get up here. And we are poisoned seven stacks, and now we are poisoned no stacks. I'll do it again. See if I can make these guys mad. Come on. There we go. There we go. There's the poison. I just want them to refresh it. I'm going to get a couple stacks on there. All right. There we go. We got eight seconds left on it. Six, five, and then there you go. Cleanse. So uh, right now, poison and death touch. I don't think there's any other curses. That black cloud you get, that just stops you from seeing. It's not really a curse. Um, but the Servants of Wraiths, they do that spell, and it does a bunch of ticks. It's kind of like a corruption, but uh, well, actually not really. It's more like a poison. It just does a bunch of ticks. Okay, so the next spell uh, we'll show is we'll show Divine Light. Um, now, Divine Light is a spell that is locked specifically to the Felgarth sub-faction. 
Um, that's one of the newest things that was added to the um, in the most recent or, uh, rework, and it is always have to remember where it is. There it is. So um, it is part of the House Stormcaller subfaction. So you have to make sure you pick them, not the Holy Syndicate. And it is also their one hundred level one hundred twenty uh, feet. So you have to not only learn the subfaction, but you have to max level on them. And there it is right there, Divine Light. Now, Divine Light, there's the ingredients to do it. Now, Divine Light is actually a really interesting, and I'd probably say one of the most powerful spells in the game, um, or at least healing spells in my opinion. It's pretty expensive to make. Uh, you don't get a lot when you make it, but the cool thing is, is we're going to put Divine Light on Earth Magic Zero. It doesn't matter. Now, this is an AoE, so this is going to uh, heal any ally within its perimeter, um, I've tested it on NPCs. It doesn't heal NPCs. Not sure if it's supposed to. Um, I haven't actually been able to test it to see uh, if you're fighting other uh, real-life people. Uh, maybe that's something I'll test out and I'll make a note of it. Um, but I'm not sure if you're like in a PvP situation, if you cast this on the ground, uh, if it's actually going to heal anybody that's another player. Um, it will heal your thralls. At least it's supposed to. Um, we're about to find out if it does. And like I said, it's a pretty massive AoE. So what I'm going to do is, as you can see, I increased just for, I put myself to zero vitality, which again, I have plus two because of the armor I'm wearing, whatever. Um, my thrall, you can see, has about half life. I have, I increased my HP to 40k just to see how strong this spell is um, and how long it lasts. It does last for 20 seconds, but we're going to cast it on the ground. And as you can see, there's a big yellow bubble around. Now, the cool thing is you can see my life going up pretty fast. Now I'm outside the bubble. I'm not healing. I'm gonna run inside the bubble, and now it's going up fast again. So the cool thing is, is if you are outside the the sphere that it creates, um, you don't get healing. So the it's really nice because you could cast it in a specific area. Your you know your friend if you miss your friends, they can just run into it real quick. If you're you know playing together, or whatever. But as you can see, the bubble is pretty massive. My thrall got fully healed. I went up almost 30k. Um, it lasts for 20 seconds. It's a pretty strong. Heal and the bubble is massive. I mean, we're doing this entire platform and some. So the next spell we're going to look at is Starlight. Starlight, again, is locked to uh, House Stormcaller of the Felgarth faction. Um, and I believe it's to the first level. Yes, it is. So this one you get at the at level 80. As soon as you can learn House Stormcaller, you get this one. This one I like a lot. Uh, we'll take a look real quick. Starlight right there. Master Require. It does take Power Gems, so that's a little beefy. Um... But it's a really, really cool spell. You're probably not going to use it in a lot of situations. However, uh, let's see. Did I? I think I already dragged. Yes. It's a pretty cool spell. And as you can tell. Oh, missed. There we go. It is a magical flare. It's going to illuminate. And it does a really good job of illuminating. Actually, this is really bright. I mean, this is nighttime. Um, let's see. How far can I throw it and it illuminate? Let's see if it, let's see when it hits. There you go. My aim was a little off, but you can see the illumination. It let each one of these projectiles last, at least currently, last for 30 seconds. So it's actually a good amount of time. And the last spell we're going to go over is going to be Earth Boulder or Stun Boulder. Again, this is another Felgarth. So as you can see, Felgarth gets, or Felgarth pretty much gets all the uh, faction lock spells for Earth Magic at least. Um, and again, how Stormcaller. As you, uh, House Stormcaller is kind of the uh, nature magic, and then the uh, Holy Syndicate does arcane magic, so that's why you're going to see a lot of this on them. Now, Stun Boulder, I believe, is... Yes, uh, it's the one you get unlocked right off the bat. So you've got, you'll have access to this at level 80, and we'll take a quick look. Stun Boulder right there. So it's pretty close to Earth Boulder. It's a little bit more expensive, or a good amount more expensive, um, but still ingredients aren't crazy. And uh, this one I actually really like because it's very unique. Okay, so to test Stun Boulder, basically what it does is exactly what it says. So we're going to drag Stun Boulder into... You're going to want to do it in Earth Magic Zero because the goal of it is to stun, not to kill. So you want to do the least amount of damage per hit. We hop down here, and it looks exactly like Earth Boulder, except when it hits, it does concussive damage instead of damage damage. Uh, so basically what that means is you have something... There's, it's basically a truncheon. It's a magical truncheon. Now, to compare it, to the truncheons in the game to show you viability 
Now, again, we'll go here, attributes. My accuracy is zero. Well, two, whatever. Either way. So, um, you know, you can see how much damage I'm doing there. Obviously, I have strength, which will give you double concussive, but I don't know anybody that doesn't run at least 10 points in strength. So, we'll just assume that everybody has that. But when we throw this on a Stormhold Soldier, we do, we're do we doing 96 concussive damage. Now, we're going to take a look at, we're going to do the Reinforced Steel Truncheon. We're going to do Seth's Truncheon which a lot of people run early game. And then we're going to do the Chronixium Truncheon, which is the AOC one you get uh, pretty much at end game also. So this is the reinforced one. So we did 96 with the spell. We're doing 43 with this. Now we'll switch to Seth's Truncheon. 48 again. 48. 48. And now let's go to the Chronixium. 77. 77 and then back to stun boulder 96 96 96 so as you can see stun boulder is definitely a lot better for knocking out thralls um i've actually used this spell on like vanilla thralls like in uh, like new asgarth for example and it will absolutely knock them out in like two boulders it's it's hilarious um one or two hits and you're pretty much knocking them out depending on uh, how you're statted and stuff like that but Stumble, they're pretty cool. I mean, again, for the price, you know, we'll see. Um, and that's part of the reason why I'm not going to focus too much on the mats that are required to make these spells because you never know if things are going to be balanced to make it a little bit more feasible for the amount of uh, mats that go into it. So that's always changing. But uh, a lot of things that usually don't change is, you know, the amount of damage or whatever it does. So that should be pretty good for a while. But either way, the gist of the spell is not going to change for a very long time, I would assume. And the last thing is the heavy attacks. Now, we've been doing the light attack pretty much the entire time. That's light attack, left click, whatever. Um, but right, the right click heavy attack does not change no matter what magic you use. So, Or not what level magic you use, I should say. So all the earth magic heavy attacks are exactly the same. Doesn't matter if I'm using earth magic zero, earth magic five. Doesn't matter if I have soothe equipped or if I have earth boulder equipped. Doesn't matter. Doesn't change anything. The only thing that changes is if you use one through five, the damage changes. So the amount of damage it does per blast will change um, depending on which one you're using. So obviously you're going to want to do your heavy attack with your highest level. Don't, if you have a zero for healing and we'll say four equipped, make sure if you're going to do a heavy attack, you do it with the four, you equip the four real quick and do it with that. Now, the way it works is the heavy attack will do a certain amount of damage per burst. And I'll explain the burst as soon as we get into it. Um, tier one does 20 damage tier two does, or earth magic two does 30 damage. Uh, tier 3 does 55, Tier 4 70, and Tier 5 does 120 damage. Now, per blast means you're going to hear a boom, a boom, a boom when I do it. Every one of those does your base damage. Now, obviously, if you have points in accuracy, that's going to increase the amount of damage um, and stuff like that. And obviously, depending on who you're fighting, how much armor and stuff like that uh, will also affect it. But for Stormhold Soldiers, we're going to do with no points in accuracy. And we're going to do Earth Magic 1. We're going to do the right attack. There's your blast. One blast, two blast, three blast, four blast, five. The five blasts. Now, the blasts are always being balanced, so maybe in the, when you're watching this, there's six blasts or whatever. As you can also see, it does a cripple and it does a poison. Uh, you get five stacks of poison on it, so it's pretty nice. A good amount of damage done. Nothing super crazy. Now let's do it. Let's do with Earth, Ma Earth Magic Five. And actually, I'm going to do it in vanity mode just so we can get a different view. As you can see, the AOE is actually pretty considerable. It's a pretty big distance. It's not too much beyond what we're actually using right now. Maybe I think it's one more block would actually cover it. And lastly, we're going to do it with uh, full 50 points into our accuracy uh, with Earth Magic 5. Just to get a gist of what you're looking at if you actually max leveled pretty much all, anything that has to do with magic. Hey, he's pushing me. That's annoying. So you're looking at, I'd probably say that's can probably double the amount of damage. Nice cool thing is it also does that little knockback. So it's one of, if you can actually pull the spell off, you actually don't, they're not going to attack you through it. That used to be one of the problems with the old magic is you're casting, but it didn't do any kind of like knockback. So they would actually, you'd be in the middle of casting it and then spell you can't actually get out of. Um, and they would just be swiping away at you. There is a little bit of lead time to the casting and there's a little bit of uh, you can't move after the casting um but again if they're fighting the thrall and stuff like that you're in an area um you should be able to get through it real quick or if you're on a race platform even better 
Okay, so that basically covers Earth Magic. So, um, pretty in-depth guide. Hopefully, that helps everybody out. It's not like I said from the previous videos. Not a lot of changes when it comes to the core. Uh, Soothe was increased a little bit. The rest of the spells, uh, not so much. There were a good amount of Earth spells added to the game. They're all behind Felgarth. But that's because Felgarth is a magical faction, so they got a bunch of spells uh, unique to themselves. Um, other than that, the only other change is really getting the power gems using the harvest tool, which I think is a very cool thing. Um, it adds a little bit more, you know, harvesting, but a little bit more, uh, you know, a little more dynamic to the magic system, actually having to get a specific material to craft specific things. So kind of a cool thing. Let me know if you definitely like, if you liked the video or whatever, if you have any questions or concerns, anything like that. I am working on the magic series. Uh, what we'll do is we're going to go through all the nature magics first. So at least that's my goal. Who knows? I might change it up. Once I get through the nature magics, we can go into the attunements for the arcane and blood magics and through the magics themselves. There's a couple of things to go through, but uh, this is part two of the magic series. Uh, give a thumbs up if you liked it. Definitely hit the subscribe button so you get notified when the next magic video and any other tutorial we do drops. Also, we'll give a huge shout out to our Patreons and our elite Patreons. Thank you so much for everything you all do. If you're interested in being part of the Patreons, definitely check out the link below. They get exclusively timed videos. Some of the videos, they are open to everybody a little early. Uh, there's a, you know, even longer exclusively time videos access to an exclusive uh, discord all that cool stuff so definitely check that out also check out our discord we have a link in the description below as well as we stream on twitch check out that in the description below otherwise i'll see you guys in the next one as always fear the reckoning